In this video, we are going to have the first look inside hole number one of the brand new Archipelago 47 Catamaran Explorer Yacht. If you subscribe to my channel, then you probably would have seen a video that I made in July 2022 during the final build phase of the Archipelago 47. If you have not seen that video yet, I will leave a link in the video description and I will include the video on the end screen. Two months after visiting the boat shed where this magnificent aluminium customizable explorer yacht was being built, it was great to film some footage aboard hole number one during the Southampton International Boat Show. Amongst the many white hulls, the blue twin hull of this masterpiece of naval architecture attracted a lot of interest from both the media and the general public. And join me on this yacht tour as we find out why. On the starboard side of the stern, there is a life raft that can be neatly and safely stowed in the transom. I love these black handrails and the wood finish on top of the gunnels. I think that the sloping elements on the stern look fantastic against the straight finish on the transom. As we gaze underneath the main deck, we get an early sense and indication of the volume and space that can be found in a port and starboard accommodation hulls. But now let us board the boat via the door on the starboard side. There is also another entry point on the port side as well. As we step into the cockpit, one of the first things that strikes me is just how much space there is here. This will be such a great area for entertaining guests or just relaxing as you cruise towards your next destination. As mentioned when we boarded, there is another access point on the port side of the cockpit. Note also the access door to the port engine room. Again, there is another access door on the starboard side for the other engine room. In a minute we will take a walk around the upper deck, but here we get a great view of just how wide the side decks are. I love how the overhang from the roof of the saloon creates a shaded area on the cockpit, and the LED lighting illuminates the area in a warm and inviting way. But now we have finished having a look around in the cockpit, let us head up to the upper deck via the starboard side. Three steps take us up to the very wide side decks. There are a few things that I would like to bring to your attention here. The first is the two skylights, which help the accommodation areas to be flooded with lots of natural light. Also, note how big the windows to the saloon are. When we head inside in a minute, you will see how the large windows give outstanding all-round views when standing in the saloon and when you are standing at the helm position. On the roof of the saloon, we find a roof rack that can be used to stow your paddle boards or maybe your canoes. After all, what better way to explore an idyllic anchorage? Aft is where we also find the aerials for the VHF radio. As we head forward to the bow, note again the skylights in the deck. You'll see in a minute, but I was amazed at just how much natural light there is in the accommodation areas. As we head onto the bow, we find a large black four deck trampoline. These guardrails are also a really nice touch and adds to the overall safety of this Explorer yacht. One of the great things about these four deck trampolines is that they can also double up as sun pads. But with these sun pads, you get to feel and sense the water rushing beneath you as you motor along. As we look aft, we get a great view of the forward raking windows. Note how narrow the stanchions are, allowing for a largely unobstructed view from the helm position. Note also the two powerful yet compact LED lights, a large rotatable searchlight, and the two skylights that can be opened to let fresh air waft into the saloon. We have a solid state Raymarine radar on the compact radar mast, as well as a forward looking infrared camera. These handrails which form part of the black roof rack are also a great safety feature when you are moving along the wide side decks. I love the commercial looking lines of this luxury explorer yacht. It is clear that this boat is made for serious cruising in all sorts of weather conditions. On the bow, we have a Delta plow shaped anchor.
When I was filming on board the Archipelago 47, I literally could have spent all day up here, but let us head aft and check out the rest of the boat. But not before showing you the straight up and down wave piercing bows. Chartswell Marine, the naval architect behind the Archipelago 47's primary area of expertise, is power cats for the offshore wind farm industry. But this practicality is seamlessly integrated with what has been described as the homely feel of a family cruiser. Let's head aft along the port side deck back towards the cockpit. I like this black matte finish ladder that leads up to the roof of the saloon. One of the great things about the design of the Archipelago 47 is the fact that she has a very low air draft. So she is just as comfortable cruising vast oceans as she is inland waterways. And I think that this is something that would appeal to even more buyers. Anyway, let's head back down into the cockpit before checking out the saloon. And remember, we'll come back here in a minute to have a look inside the vast engine rooms aboard this particular explorer yacht. It is also worth pointing out that a black mesh guard rail will be fitted here in place of the rope. Keep in mind that this boat was launched just a few days before the boat show. This rendering shows you how the guard rail will look once it's in place. Now let us head inside. I would encourage you if you haven't already to check out the video that I published when I visited the archipelago during the final stages of her build back in July. As we head into the saloon, you will see what I meant earlier when I referred to just how much light there is in here, thanks to the sheer number of windows around the saloon. The indirect lighting in the overhead around the skylights can be adjusted to your favorite color. Check out the TV and the large window in the aft section of the saloon. The galley is located on the starboard side of the saloon, but we'll check that out in a minute. The raised helm position and the L-shaped console are also worthy of some special attention, so we will return to that in a second. Here's a great view of the L-shaped seating in the saloon as we pan over to the starboard side and check out the galley. To starboard of the helm position we find some additional seating, where the view is just as good as it is when seated at the controls. I also love the fact that over on the starboard side, we have a large table that can be used for traditional charts. Here's where we get a great view of these skylights that allow all the fresh air and more light to flood into this area. On the overhead of the helm position we find traditional displays for the twin engines and some LCD repeater displays for the Ray Marine equipment. I love this L-shaped console, it's not something you see often but means that all of the boat's vital and essential running controls are within easy reach. And I particularly like the large Ray Marine monitor that is in the centre of the console. After all, you can never have too much information when you are operating a boat, especially when you are single-handed. It is also worth mentioning that the helm position will be able to be partitioned off from the saloon with a curtain so that there is no light leakage from the saloon when you are operating the boat at night. Now let us descend into the port hull where we find the master cabin with ensuite. I love the wood finish in here and of course the high quality of that finish. For a boat that is 47 feet you get so much space. You have to continually remind yourself that this boat is under 50 foot. You can just imagine the great views you will be able to get when you wake up in your double bed and peer outside the three large vertical windows. And what better way to fall asleep when you are underway as the vast expanse of the oceans pass you by. As we head up to the ensuite, we pass lots of storage space that can be found on the starboard side. The ensuite has a large shower with two fittings, including a rain head. Two inward facing windows combined with the skylight allow lots of sunlight into what can be a very dark area on other boats of a similar size. One of the great things about aluminium boats is just how much opportunity there is for customization. 
The starboard accommodation area aboard this boat wasn't quite ready when I filmed this footage, but this master cabin gives you some idea as to what you can expect. I am six foot four, and just look at how much room there is in this ensuite. Stephen Weatherly, the founder of Archipelago Expedition Yachts and the amazing people at Chartwell Marine, have been able to marry the rugged capabilities of commercial boats with the luxury feel of a family cruiser. And what they have achieved with this boat really does have to be seen to be believed. And what about that engine room? Working in here will be straightforward thanks to the sheer size of the engine room aboard this boat. Hull number one will be fitted with twin 420 horsepower Iveco diesels, which will give this Explorer yacht an incredibly impressive speed of 30 knots. But if you want to venture off to distant lands, then cruising at her economical speed of around seven knots will give you a range of approximately 7,000 nautical miles. As mentioned earlier in the video, hole number one, the boat that I am on, still has some fitting out to go before she is ready for her sea trials. And that is something that I'm really looking forward to, as I've spoken to Stephen about securing my place aboard this magnificent Explorer yacht when she embarks on her sea trials. Being down here reminded me of some of the machinery spaces aboard the various frigates and the aircraft carrier that I served on. Why? Well, the way that this area is laid out and the heavy duty equipment used means that you get the levels of redundancy that you could expect to find on a vessel that is designed for serious yet safe open ocean voyaging. And if you are considering buying your own Archipelago Explorer yachts, then there is something you should know about the cost. Because one of these could be yours, starting from £900,000, excluding VAT. And at today's exchange rate, that's just over $1 million. If you want to own an Archipelago 47, similar to how this boat, hole number one, is configured, then you are looking at a price of around 1.1 million pounds excluding VAT, which again at today's exchange rate is around 1.25 million dollars. And for that you get a boat that is just as happy motoring around on weekends away at 30 knots as she is embarking on long distance cruises where range is something that you won't have to worry about not forgetting that this Explorer yacht will be able to take you around 3,000 nautical miles between fuel stops. If you'd like to find out more about this amazing boat, and I will, of course, leave a link in the video description. But I'm interested to hear what you think about this fantastic Explorer yacht. As ever, let me know in the comments below, and I'll look forward to chatting with you. Thanks for watching, please don't forget to give the video a like because it means that more people on YouTube will get to see it. The video recommendation in the top left hand corner is a video that I made when I went to visit this boat as she neared her final stages of build. And don't forget to also check out my other playlists. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.